Hey, hello again. I'm at the Washington Park Arboretum in Seattle. It's a huge park, lots of areas to explore, lots of collections of different trees and flowering shrubs. I was invited to a plein air Washington artist paint out here. Lots of potential scenes to paint here. It's a hot day here in Seattle after a cool rainy spring. We've got some hot weather now. So I'm kind of wanting to paint in the shade near the water. And I've been wanting to try to paint some water lilies. So I'm looking at these beautiful lilies floating on the water. Yeah, I think I think this is what I'm going to paint. I'm thinking a vertical portrait orientation of this scene. I'm going to capture I think I'll capture a little bit of this S curve of the dark water flowing through the real bright water lilies. I'm going to keep the background really simple, not include much of the sky at all. I'll keep the path of the water lilies really high value, as bright as the sky pretty much. And then this water will be dark, this light reflecting the sky will be lighter, and then it'll, it should grade out to darker blue reflecting the, the high sky. I may include a little of this shade from this tree on some of the water lilies. I like that effect. I like the the look of those lilies as they they go from being in shade to being in sun. So I may catch that in this lower corner. I'll have to play with it a little bit. I'll, I'll do a little bit of a no tan as I'm doing the wash to play with the composition. Quick rundown on my palette. I'm using the Prolific Painter Day Tripper. This is Joshua Bean's custom plein air Peshad. Really high quality, full metal construction glass palette. Love it. It's lasted me uh, really well. He even replaced the little clips here that attach it to the standard uh, camera tripod because they were bending, he replaced them with more sturdy clips. So I've got Ivory Black, Rembrandt, and Cold Gray. This is actually just Cold Gray that I mixed myself from Ivory Black and Titanium White, but it, you can buy it in the tube from Rembrandt, Cold Gray. This is normal Titanium White, Cerulean Blue, Ultramarine Blue, Sap Green, Burnt Umber, Burnt Sienna, Lizard Crimson, Cad Red, Cad Yellow, Windsor Lemon, Gamblin, Radiant Lemon, Yellow Ochre. Kind of my standard abbreviated palette. I think it'll be more than enough colors for the scene here today. Got my Gamsol in here. Got some Neo McGilp. I'm not using Liquin today because it tacks up too fast in warm weather. I switched to Gamblin's Neo McGilp, which it speeds up the drying just a little bit, but not too much. And then I'll put a little bit of Gamsol in this smaller cup as well that I can just dip my brush in. I'm going to mix my colors first because I like the light I'm seeing right now. Cerulean blue sky with just a touch of ultramarine. The distant trees are pretty cool green with hints of warm green. So I'll mix up, I think, two pools for the trees in the light. One more orange, more yellow, and one a little cooler, a little bluer. And a, a warm shadow 
color. It's cool sunlight today, so the shadows are warmer. Then I'll mix up a very high value orangey green for the water lilies. This bank of lilies should be a little less vibrant, a little grayer than this bank, and this bank should be a little cooler and grayer than these nearest water lilies. So what I'll do is I'll mix up the colors for these lilies closest to me first, and then I can just use that same color as I go further back. I can just add a little bit of my gray or a little bit of white to cool it and push it back. That's a nice shortcut so I don't have to mix up three different piles of paint. I can just have one pile for the lilies. Now there are, if you look close at the lilies, there are green lilies laying flat, there are orange lilies laying flat, and there are there are vibrant orange lilies turned up. So what I can do is take that one lily color that I mix and add a little bit of orange and white for the upturned orange lilies and I can just add straight orange for the lilies that are, are turned up and you're seeing the light actually shine through the, the leaf of the lily. I'll mix up a sky color that I can use both for the water and for the sky. I think I will just show a little bit of sky through some tree holes, but not, more, not much more than that. I'll use the colors that I mix up for the distant trees, the lights and the shadows for this band of dark water. I may darken it just a little bit more with burnt umber, burnt sienna, orange, just to shift the, the colors and move them a little bit warmer, a little darker. And that should be about it. I think just those few piles of color should be enough for this scene. Lately I've been trying to minimize the number of piles of color. I like that, the harmonizing effect that has on the painting. small bristle brush, a little bit of gamsol, and some burnt umber. I'm going to place the horizon line pretty high above this one third line, so maybe about here. And I'll have it pretty flat, but I'll softly bend it softly bend it up and then it takes a jog back over here this is low bushy scrubby brushes on this island and then it, the water lilies continue on beyond that into the distance I'll take a small bristle brush and just do a quick sketch of the scene. Play with the no tan with the sketch. The no tan is the light and dark simplified value structure. I want to try to connect all the darks. As always, thanks so much for joining me. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe. Maybe just some hints of darks along here as well. I'm just using the scene out there as inspiration. I'm not trying to copy it exactly. I think it'd be nice too on this vertical one third line if there was another darker shadow that came down to the water. Another tree shape. But it's not exactly the same shape or size as this. So with this one, maybe I'll make 
break this into a couple of shapes. Maybe this will be a rounder, bushy tree in front of a larger tree that goes off the panel. This one can be shorter. Got some different bushy shapes here. I'll take a little bit of blue. Now I'm using transparent colors for this initial wash. I don't want to use any white for this initial wash. It'll just make things muddy too soon. So transparent ultramarine blue, transparent sap green. This, these earth colors, burnt umber and burnt sienna, they're not quite as transparent, but they're transparent enough. They, the, the particles of pigment in there will break up and often make kind of neat patterns in the initial wash. Alizarin crimson and yellow ochre, those are all pretty safe colors for the transparent wash. Cerulean blue, cad red, had yellow, these, these yellows, they have white added, so they're a little harder to work with, but they, you can still use them in the initial wash, you just have to watch out that you're not putting them on too heavy. So I want the sky maybe to come in in a nice V-shape here, and again over here. Something like that. I don't want super equal spacing and I don't want the shapes to be exactly the same size. I want variety. That looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and use this blue to sketch in the pattern of the lilies down here as well. But you can see here's the rough sketch with the no tan, the, the main darks. I'm trying to connect them. This will be mostly darker water down here as well so there'll be darks darks and then these darks all connected so now going with, now I'll go in with a bigger bristle brush and using gamsol I'll do the gamsol wash I'm going to use burnt umber for the background trees cuz I want there to be some warmth shining through those background trees. I'm going to leave that initial, just the sketch in of the of the blue sky. That should be enough. I can paint over that with the full color. Throw in a little bit of orange here to show the path of these little scrubby bushes. There's also kind of a more orange tree here. As I do this Gamsol wash, I can play with the composition more and just try to come up with something that I like. I'm going to go with a little bit of yellow ochre and put in the main path of the lilies. Give them a nice, light, natural warmth. shine through. Reinforce the shadows in the trees. A little more burnt umber. Go the main path of the water. And go a little thicker here so that it stays dark. I'm going to add just a little bit of Ultramarine blue as well. Darken it. You can 
can see here I'm not staying real close, I'm not staying too rid too strict about that initial sketch. I know roughly what I had in mind, and I'm letting the, the wash kind of do some random things too, which I find interesting and fun. Tad yellow with the yellow ochre for these distant lilies. Now while that's still wet, I want to try using the squeegee to remove most of the paint from the panel along the path of the lilies. It's not that I need a hard edge, it's just that I want to quickly brighten. Just experimenting. I could have used a brush or a paper towel just as easily. There's the initial wash done. My camera keeps dying. I'm not sure why. Maybe it's just a little too warm today. So this video may be a little bit chopped up. But I've got the No. 10 lights and darks in there. There's quite a bit of glare on the panel. I may try to move around a little bit to where I'm more in consistent shade so you can see better. Now I'll just start with the background the sky and those background trees and work my way forward. I'm going to keep the background and the foreground pretty loose, not very detailed. I want the, the majority of the detail to be right in here. Everything else can be pretty soft and uh, lots of soft edges, no real strong contrasts. That should push the eye down toward this area. Also this, this nice path, this edge is going to draw attention because of the dark against the light. So I want to make sure those reflections look nice. There's a little streak of reflected sky in here occasionally when the wind blows across that's nice so I may throw that in with a little bit of sky color. Alright, I'll start with this large clean rosemary evergreen. Give it a little bit of gam salt to start with just to help the paint slide off easily. Dab in the sky first. I don't have to cover up this wash that I put in completely. I can I can leave some of that for variety. I'm gonna paint over the edge of where I think the trees are going to go so that I get a nice soft blended edge. It takes very little paint. I can even add a little bit of this deeper blue for some variety. And a little bit of white. Let's see, I want some sky holes down in that tree. I'm going to make it just a little darker. Where you see the sky through the, through the trees, they're going to be a little darker and richer. Just because there's lots of branches and leaves in those sky holes changing the, the way the light is shining through. I'm going to go ahead and add this high value sky down here as well. I 
that will feed into the darker value sky. All in the rough pattern that I laid in with that initial wash. I'll go back to this evergreen that I used for the sky and for the lightest parts of the reflected water. And I'll paint the trees in the background. I just want to see how it looks against the sky. I can adjust it if need be. That seems a little dark. Let's try this lighter tan. Better, but still a little dark, so I'm going to add some of the sky and a little bit of white into each mix. That's better. So even when you pre mix, you still have to test and you have to adjust as you go. You can't, in my method, in my approach, and in my experience, you can't just stay blindly with those premix colors. You have to adjust based on what you're seeing, how it's matching. Try the shadow color now. Yeah, that's nice. Not too jarring. warmer shadow for over here. Looks about right. It's not quite exactly what I'm seeing out there, but it's close enough. I don't want to try to mix every shade of green I'm seeing in the distance because then there'll be too much contrast and too much vibrance. I want those distant trees to fade out a bit. The sun's coming from this direction, so planes facing the sun, the shapes facing the sun should be brighter than the shadow side. I can introduce some of these lily colors in the distance too, just here and there. That'll give some harmony with the, the lilies in the foreground. And also, by blending that lily color into the tree color, it deadens it, dulls it. I'm trying to keep that shadow pattern that I established earlier. Okay, let's step back from that and take a look. See how it compares to the scene? Yeah, it looks pretty close. I'm wanting a little bit more of this orange on the top of this tree to reinforce the, the sunny side of the tree. Not too much. Yeah, that's good. All right. Now I'll clean this brush out and go right into the lilies. Notice I'm noticing 
there's a really high value warm note that I didn't mix. I'm going to take a little bit of white, a little bit of burnt sienna. Right at the edge of this bank, there's a couple patches of high value light that are interesting. Warm high value lights. Maybe too strong, it may distract, be distracting, but I want to capture it. Kind of reinforces where the bank of the little pond is. well, indicate some grasses, not too much, not, no strong edges. Good. Now while I have these tree colors on my brush, I'm going to go ahead and paint the, the reflection of the trees in the water. I add a little bit of burnt umber to darken these dark patches. bit of a lizard crimson too. Add some of that back up in here. It's getting warm out here. Heating up. Hottest day of the year so far. It's gonna get, get up in 80s probably. The, the duck path through the duck path through the lilies. I don't need to cover the wash I put in earlier completely. I can just drag paint vertically. down roughly matching what I'm seeing above it and matching the, the wash I put in. Mostly dragged down and then a few stripes across really adds to the illusion that you're looking at water. And then I want to add just a few notes of sky, reflected sky as well. Take my sky brush I used earlier and just lightly touch here and there where I'm seeing ripples occasionally. It doesn't take a lot. If you overdo it, it kind of looks too cliche, too sweet. But a little goes a long way. I might draw a duck in later, trailing some of these little ripples. That would be interesting, but again, it can, it can look saccharine sweet real quick if you're not careful. I cleaned out this evergreen that I used for the trees, and now I'll use it for the water lilies. I'm going to start with this lightest, grayest lily color. And fill in this 
back bank. And shift it around this with white. All of these other lily colors. I just need to resist the temptation to add too much detail or too much variation in these back lilies. I don't want them to to jump forward. I can kind of squint at the scene and see that there are patches of darker, patches of lighter, patches of more orange, patches of whiter. You just kind of react to that and that'll, that'll add a lot without adding a lot of detail. It's so important to squint when you're doing stuff like this. I've been wanting to paint water lilies. I love Monet's water lily paintings. I don't want to try to copy Monet. We had the the best Monet we'll ever have, so I don't want to do a Monet copy here, copy here, but I want to try to capture what I kind of remember as striking me about his water lily paint, his water lily paintings, which was very little of the of the background or the sky included, other than what was reflected in the, in the water. I also like how there's a feeling of linear perspective in his water lily paintings. The, the near lilies are somewhat detailed and descriptive. You can tell what they are and then as it goes back they just become abstract clumps. So I want to keep these groups of lilies clumped together. I don't want a polka dot pattern of, of lilies out there. I think as it comes forward the edge can become more ragged. I can include more space in between some of them but I, I want to keep it simple not a lot of texture back there. A little more, a little bit of texture right toward the edge here to give a little variation to this smoother paint back here. Don't want there to be a lot of texture. Now as I come forward I can add more texture which will give the illusion that things are coming closer. Grab a clean brush and dab in some of this vibrant orange green where the light is shining through the, the leaves. Where they're close, they're bigger. They seem a little dark, so I'm going to add some yellow. As they receive, they're gonna get smaller. There's one of these in the shade. Make it darker. Okay, now back to the lights. Dipping into some straight cad yellow and gambling radiant lemon for these closest water lilies, especially where the sun is hitting them. They're pretty vibrant. That will bring them forward compared to the background. 
but I don't want one consistent color. So I'm also dipping into this darker green and adding some pure sap green to that for some of these closer green lilies. I'm getting into some shade. The shade's getting a little deeper, so it's getting a little harder to judge color, but I think it's working. like what I'm seeing now where these are going into shade. That's not dark enough. Maybe where this transition is that'll be okay, but these in here need to be darker to carry the illusion. We can add a little of this up here, here where there's some shadow. Shadows under this tree in the foreground are pretty warm, so I'm gonna add burnt umber and alizarin crimson. Yeah, I think that's working. Maybe a little touch of that shadow under these nearest lily pads will help with the illusion that these guys are closer. I don't want to overdo it. I can always come back in and whittle those down later, make them smaller. Turned up in the distance, catching light, just a nice, bright, cool yellow. So, I'll do that by dipping into this, this white that has just a touch of blue in it, and this grayed out yellow. It helps push those back, add some texture, and add a little bit of that up here as well. that there's some nice patches of reflected sky and among those lilies as well so I'll add just a little bit of that It's messing with the texture of the, of the lilies. So if I want to add more of that, I think I can add that later in the studio. Now with a nice soft natural hair brush, this is a Rosemary Series 279 Badger Hair. I just want to knock down a few of the edges in the water. I'm not really blending, just knocking some of the edges. And in the trees as well. Here's where it ended up, 11 by 14 inch oil on panel, the Washington Park Arboretum. I'm pretty happy with how it came out. If I step back, it looks and feels like the place 
I like the looseness of the water, the thin layer. It's really thin paint. Some of the underpainting is showing through, which is nice. And it has a nice effect against the more thicker texture of the lilies. I think the value pattern held up. In the studio, I may need to bump up the shadow in this area. And where it transitions from shadow into light here, I think that could use a little more work, a little more development. I need to make a decision too about where I want this shadow to go, if there's a shadow there, if there's a shadow there, play with that a bit as well. But otherwise I think it's pretty close to what I would call finished. Let me know what you think in the comments below. As always, thanks so much for joining me. I'll see you in the next one. If you'd like to support the channel, please visit my website. I sell these little plain air pieces at a reasonable price because I consider them practice. It really makes me happy when someone likes my art enough that they want to hang it in their home. You can also sign up for my newsletter and stay up to date on my new work and shows and get a discount on original art and prints.